So we were able to uh, run a distributed ping on our cluster, which was not super exciting, but gave us something uh, easy enough to reason with. But now we want to do something a little bit better. Our end goal is to get the Docker Coins app running on the cluster. Uh, and as an intermediary goal, we are going to run a service. Um, sorry, I should say to run containers because as we saw this morning, the, the word service is a little bit overloaded and can be a little bit confusing and ambiguous with Kubernetes. So we want to run a bunch of containers and we want to be able to connect to these containers. So we want to expose containers. So there is a command for that. It's kubectl expose. And when we do kubectl expose, it is going to create a service uh, for existing pods. Um, kubectl expose is a little bit like kubectl run in the sense that it's a convenience. Um, this command is going to generate some YAML for us and then push that YAML to the API server. <clears throat> Once the service is created, um, there is some uh, behind-the-scenes uh, network magic that's going to happen so that we, when we connect to a specific IP address, we end up connecting to our containers. And there is a DNS entry uh, added uh, in our cluster. Uh, in Kubernetes, DNS is handled by uh, a service called Core DNS. It's basically a dynamic DNS server that lives in the cluster uh, and that will be used for uh, service name resolution. So for instance, if I uh, create uh, a deployment called hello with kubectl run hello, etc., etc., and then I do kubectl expose hello, then I will have a DNS entry for hello added uh, in, in my cluster. So there are different types of services, and we're going to, to see what they correspond to. First, uh, what I've called basic service types. These service types are available everywhere on any uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we will have that. There is cluster IP and node port. Cluster IP is the default service type. When I create a service of type cluster IP, this means that a special IP address will be allocated for that service. This IP address corresponds to what I saw, um, excuse me, here. When I, when I do kubectl get services, uh, I see like this 109601. This is the cluster IP for my service. Um, if you, if you've done some, uh, advanced network things with like BGP, Anycast, service IPs, that kind of thing, it's a similar concept. If you haven't done anything like that, let me explain. This cluster IP doesn't really exist. It, it's not a machine. It's it's not uh, it's it, it, it's it doesn't have uh, any existence. It doesn't correspond to uh, to anything existing on my cluster. It's a completely virtual IP address, which is used, um, I would say, for interception. That means when I try to connect to that IP address. There is something that takes my connection and rewrites the destination to be the exact destination that I'm trying to reach. So for instance, when I'm trying to connect to 1096.01.443, in fact, my connection is going to, to go to a different place. Um, so that, that's, that's what the cluster IP is about, which means that I can't ping this IP address because it, there is nothing to respond to the, to the ping. Um, if I try to, you know, like, uh, telnet, like if I try to connect to a random port number, nothing, because there is nothing to respond. It only works if I try to connect to the exact TCP port number, so in that case 443, then it works because only then, um, the, the connection is intercepted and rewritten to go to the right place. So that's, that's a cluster IP service. The next type of service is node port. When I create a service of type node port, um, a, a cluster IP is still allocated, but in addition to that, there is a port number allocated in a specific range. By default, that's between 30,000 and 32768. And my service becomes reachable on all the nodes of the cluster on that specific port. For instance, let's say I create an Elasticsearch um, deployment and then I expose it as a node port. 
Um, Kubernetes is going to pick a port number for me, maybe like uh, 30,123. And then I can connect to port 30,123 on any node of the cluster from inside, from outside. And it's going to uh, route the connection, like send it to my uh, Elasticsearch deployment. Um, and then we have a couple of other service types that are not always available, and I will explain why. Um, first, we have load balancer. That one, the name can be a little bit um, of a misnomer because at first, when I when I saw this, I was like, "Oh, service type load balancer. Oh, that means if I can't create that type of service, then I can't load balance service." No, no, service type load balancer means that there will be a cloud load balancer for that service. For instance, if I'm on Amazon, that's an ELB. Um, if I'm on uh, Azure or Google Cloud uh, or OpenStack, it's going to be the load balancer as a service equivalent uh, on these clouds. So when I create a service of type load balancer, then a load balancer will be created uh, and it will be used to uh, deal with my traffic. The point of that is to allow connections to arbitrary port numbers. Let's say I want to, um, to run uh, a web server, uh, so I need to listen on port 80 and port 443 to accept inbound traffic. Or maybe I'm running a Git server and I need to accept uh, SSH connections on port 22. Then one way is to use a load balancer service because then I can use any port number I want and that load balancer will accept connections on that port and route them uh, to my pods. It's not always available because we need to be in a place that has load balancer as a service. So if I'm running on, on, my, uh, on my data center or on a couple of machines in the closet, I may or may not have something to dynamically create load balancers. Um, and typically here, even though the VMs that we're using are deployed on Amazon, um, I have not uh, set up the integration between Kubernetes and AWS. The reason being that for that to work, I will need to put my uh, AWS credentials on the cluster that you're using. And even though I fully trust all of you to not use these credentials to mine bitcoins or do anything illegal, uh, I never know what could happen if like these papers happen to fall in the wrong hands and somebody would then basically have access to my EC2 credentials. So for, for safety purposes, um, the clusters that you have here, even though they run on AWS, they are not set up to have the nice and neat AWS integration. And so we can't use the load balancer service type. The other, the, the last service type is external name. And external name means don't create like a cluster IP, a node port or anything like that. Just add a DNS entry in the DNS service. This could be useful, for instance, if I want my code uh, to, to connect to a specific name. Remember, like if I look uh, at the code of Docker coins uh, in the worker, um, when it needs to do requests to RNG, it just connects to HTTP colon slash slash RNG, and then the, the DNS makes that happen. It resolves RNG to the IP address of the RNG container. Well, I could create an external name, on service RNG. That would be an alias to um, RNG520 dot um, infrastructure dot IO. And then when my container resolves RNG, it would actually uh, get that DNS name. So that, that's one of the multiple ways that I can access an external resource from the, from the inside of my cluster, uh, in a, in a transparent manner. Because for that code, uh, the fact that RNG is in the cluster or outside, it's going to be fully transparent. External name is not always available because the DNS service is not a strict requirement on Kubernetes. To be honest, I have never seen a cluster that did not have the DNS integration. So to rephrase that, every cluster I've seen so far had DNS integration, and so external name is available everywhere. But strictly speaking, um, you, you may be on a cluster that doesn't have core DNS or kube DNS running, and then you wouldn't be able to use external name services. <coughs> 